So the title of the workshop is uh, Building for the Modern Internet, Powered by Blockchain. Uh, and if you looked at the description, um, I, I, we did talk a little bit about what this workshop uh, actually entails, what we're going to talk about. Um, I myself, my name is Kieran, um, and, uh, and he's Clarence. Uh, we're from Elastos uh, Project. If you guys haven't heard of it, we are a um, infrastructure project, and we have, you know, we, we do have our own blockchain that went live two years ago, but uh, blockchain is not the only thing we do. Blockchain is just one of the many different things that we're involved in. Um, our, some of our other components involve, uh, we have our own decentralized uh, storage system, we call it Hive, um, for storing, you know, big data, uh, movies, uh, music, wh whatever it is you want to store that you couldn't otherwise store in the, on the blockchain. And then, last but not least, we have uh, Carrier, and I'm going to go over this in a little bit, but Carrier is, is our peer-to-peer -peer, uh, decentralized relay network that lets developers um, build applications on top uh, that lets you you know, transfer data from one point to another, one user to another, one device to another in a completely decentralized manner. So that's a little introduction, um, but I'm gonna talk a little bit about Elastos and then we're gonna, do, we're gonna have three demos. Um, you guys can choose to follow along um, uh, along the way, but uh, the first few slides are introducing Elastos so you kinda get a gist of um, what we're all about and what we do. Okay. Okay, that's better. So intro to Elastos. Um, like um, you know, everyone else, we're also trying to focus on solving the trilemma problem, which deals with security, scalability, and decentralization. Um, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, we're not just a blockchain project, even if we do have our own blockchain. We are a, an infrastructure project where we utilize blockchain uh, for Payment, um, decentralized identification, you know, KYC, uh, running smart contracts, creating all kinds of tokens. Um, you know, we use blockchain for that. Um, and then uh, we have our carrier, which I talked about earlier. It's a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, decentralized network that lets you relay data from one point to another. And then we have Hive, which is our decentralized storage solution, which is based off of IPFS. Um, and we, you know, Elastos um, blockchain had its genesis block two years ago um, by the Elastos Foundation, and we are a not-for-profit company, um, and everything we do is open source. So if you go to our GitHub, there's over 100 repositories that are um, open source. Everything that we do. Um, and as part of the gen genesis block, we actually reserved half of the token supply. Uh, to be used for ecosystem development. So that, um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about this at the end, but we have an on-chain governance system called Cyber Republic, where anyone can go in and submit a proposal and a uh, community can vote on it. And you know, with the, all, all the budget, the milestones, what are you trying to do, it, whether it's building an act actual application utilizing Elastic technology, or it can be related to marketing efforts or, or legal or anything like that. Anything that is going to help the e Elastos ecosystem grow, you can uh, submit a proposal. And then if the community likes it and if the council members who are part of the Cyber Republic, they vote yes, then you get funded and you can start working on it. So that all that half of our token supply is reserved just for that, which is kind of cool. So on the right, um, this actually describes the architecture of Elastos. Uh, it's a multi-tier architecture. Um, it, you can't really see anything there, all those letters, but I'm gonna explain the best I can. This is just relate, what it, when it's relate, um, this, this relates to the Elastos blockchain component. So what we have is we actually have um, uh, a main chain and a side chain structure. Our main chain handles the most basic, basic um, uh, transactions, um, pretty much, you know, if you wanted to make payment, um, that's, that's what the main chain is responsible for. And it is uh, merged mined with Bitcoin um, or any other SHA-256 uh, coins. Pretty much what that means is existing Bitcoin miners or any other miners can 
decide to merge mine um, Bitcoin and Elastos at the same time. So you can submit the same proof of work to both chains simultaneously. Um, and um, you know, even if you might not be lucky enough to uh, submit uh, a block for the Bitcoin network, you can still be lucky to, you know, you can be one of the lucky winners to submit uh, to the Elastos uh, blockchain. This actually is very energy efficient because it takes literally zero energy when you do merge mining. You're just writing on top of other merge mining that is that you're already doing. So why not just utilize it to secure one more chain? Uh, one of the first blockchain who did something like this is Namecoin, who also merge mines with Bitcoin. And um, you could technically merge mine Elastos, Bitcoin, and Namecoin at the same time if you wanted to. So that's that's our merge mining. Uh, we have a hybrid consensus of um, Auxiliary proof of work and uh, delegated proof of stake. What that means is the merge miners uh, package the blocks and then the DPoS nodes uh, validate the block and sign the block and they sort of create that finality to block. So uh, there, there's, there's no forks happening there. So it, it kind of works together. It's, um, you know, it, it, it we get the best of both worlds where you're using the existing Bitcoin hash power to package blocks, but then you're also using delegated proof of stake nodes to sign the blocks. And that's why we have the, the hybrid consensus there. Uh, if you see there, as I mentioned earlier, we have the main chain side chain structure. So main chain doesn't do anything. It doesn't even have smart contracts um, and it has two minute block time. Um, but, which is fine because we have these numerous side chains um, and we can port over any existing blockchain platforms as one of the side chains. So one of the first side chains that we developed was a decentralized identifier side chain, which lets you issue decentralized IDs to applications, users, anyone. Uh, and we are also, um, you know, uh, working together, we're part of W3C. So, you know, all this DID specifications that they have uh, been working on, we, we, we have been working closely with them to have our DID sidechain conform to that specification. Um, and we also have uh, an Ethereum sidechain. So anything you can do on Ethereum, you can do on this uh, blockchain, you can do it on this Ethereum sidechain. So if you have any existing Ethereum smart contracts running already and you want to move over, you can just, you know, easily port that over to work on Elastos. Uh, same thing with Neo sidechain. We support Neo smart contracts. And um, in the future, there can be um, more sidechains. For instance, if, if there is a need for something, um, so um, something like an EOS sidechain, we can easily port that. Uh, the idea behind this is because main chain pretty much, um, you know, deals with payments, it, has, it is the most secure. Uh, chain because it is also merged mine with Bitcoin. Uh, it has, but the thing is, it has two minute block time, right? Whereas, like something like Ethereum sidechain, it is it is completely DPoS. So that um, the transaction per second, it's actually um, around um, you know, uh, well, not so the block time is uh, around 10 to 15 seconds. Um, so you can you can you can um, you know easily port over your ex existing smart contracts and be able to integrate. Your, your complete decentralized application with not just the smart contract layer, but also if you wanted to store um, you know, movies, music, you can utilize our Hive, which is the decentralized storage network. And if you wanted to build like a chat application, that's just the most basic application, you can utilize Carrier. So you kind of get this package, entire package in a easy to use SDK that, uh, that we've been working on. So uh, we have three kinds of networks. Blockchain is just one of the networks. We have the carrier, which I mentioned earlier. Um, and then we have the Hive network for storage. So let me talk a little bit about carrier. Um, it, um, the way that I, I like to introduce carrier is by uh, taking an exa existing example of how something like Facebook Messenger works. So if I wanted to send you a message through Facebook, what happens is the message gets relayed to the Facebook server and then these Facebook servers relay the message back to you and so on and so forth. So Facebook is the inter intermediary, right? Um, but the thing with Elastos Carrier is you can build 
a chat application similar to how Facebook Messenger works. But the, the cool thing is it is completely peer-to-peer, end-to-end encrypted, and there is no intermediary involved. So if I wanted to send you a message through, you know, through this app that is built on Carrier, then instead of going through some intermediary, it routes through different, uh, different peers on the network and routes the traffic uh, to you. So you know, only you can read these messages and no one else. Uh, that's one use case. Uh, another use case is, um, so Carrier, another thing to mention is it's based off of Toxcore. Uh, one thing that we added among various other things on top of Carrier is um, we also added, we also c- have combined uh, the Hive, uh, which is the decentralized storage network with Carrier. So the way that we're utilizing that is now you're able to send offline messages um, and that works completely fine where, you know, Hive is used to temporarily store these messages um, in an encrypted manner. And then whenever the other user is online, the message gets relayed to, to that using Carrier. Uh, another use case is you can use Carrier for something like um, building your own smart home network. So because Carrier has a very light footprint, you can install it on any IoT devices um, like, you know, your, your smart fridge, smart camera, anything like that. And then... Uh, because all the traffic on Carrier is blacklisted by default, the only way you can communicate is if you add each other on your friends list first. So you can kind of build this, your, your own home network, uh, your smart home network, and then these devices can live behind the router, that's fine. And, but the thing is, they can, you, know, you can make it so that they, they can never talk to the outside world except the ones that you want them to talk to. For instance, uh, you know, you have this smart home network there with all the devices, and then you can build an actual application um, on your phone using Carrier SDK uh, that lets you interact with these smart devices um, using Carrier IDs. So only you are able to communicate with your smart home and no one else. So a lot of cool applications um, like that is, is possible. Um, talked about this, so I won't go into too much detail. Uh, this is about the how the architecture of Elastos blockchain is set up. We have the main chain side chain structure, uh, multiple side chains for different purposes. Uh, we're a merge mine with Bitcoin, so there is no extra energy uh, being, being produced. So um, we have the hybrid consensus, uh, auxiliary proof of work plus delegated proof of stake. Uh, and then each side chain can have its own consensus with its own block time, with its own, you know, TPS. So if there is a need for a super fast, you know, TPS sidechain in the future, we can easily port that and support that. Uh, some of the stats I wanted to share. Um, this is this was taken a little over 15 days ago, I think. Uh, basically, well, maybe a month ago, because the Bitcoin hash rate when it was at 55. Um, the Elastos hash rate was almost 50% of Bitcoin hash rates, which means that, you know, it is, it is fairly secure. And this number will only continue to go up. Oh, it's 52% now. All right. Uh, so this, this number will only continue to go up. Uh, and because, you know, you can, Bitcoin is just one of the many coins that you can merge mine Elastos with. You can also merge mine Elastos with something like Bitcoin Cash because they're both um, SHA-256. And uh, these are some of the, the mining pools that are involved in the, in the merge mining side of things. The delegated proof of uh, stake, it, we have 36 nodes and you need two thirds signature to validate each block uh, to create that finality. And the election goes on every 72 minutes or so. Um, talked a little bit about this, but this is exactly how the hybrid consensus of Elastos works. There's a transaction, these Bitcoin merge miners submit proof of work, you know, they get lucky. And then the, the delegated proof of stake nodes, uh, DP, DPoS nodes, uh, then get those blocks and verify, give their own signature, sign it, two third passes, and then it finally gets added to the blockchain network. And that happens every two minutes. Carrier, based on Toxcore, uh, decentralized encrypted peer-to-peer communication network, a relay network. Um, uh, pretty much it takes over all the network traffic that happens on the Elastos ecosystem. So every data that you send to someone else, every data that you deal with is completely protected and, and private and only you can view it and no one else. We provide SDKs for different platforms already so you can utilize that. For instance, for Android, iOS, it's already available and there are existing applications built on top. Um, and we're also working on uh, Cordova plugin, which I'll go over in a little bit where that comes in. 
Uh, and as I said, it's very lightweight and it can run on uh, pretty much any of the IoT devices. Hive based on IPFS, uh, it's a decentralized storage solution. Um, very API friendly and also we tweaked it a little bit so it, you know you, you can download a, a light node uh, uh, and use it from your phone so it's very memory efficient uh, it has higher reliability than IPFS um, and we also provide again SDKs for all the mobile platforms and we are also going to be providing a Cordova plugin um, so talked a little bit about how DID decentralized identification works um, in the traditional world, very on the right, um, well, not, that's not the traditional, this is the new world where let's say you have different applications, they can all utilize DID sidechain, they can also utilize uh, carrier, and what happens is, you know, there's the, the, the identities are issued by the blockchain instead of issued by Facebook or Google or whoever. So now you can have this interoperability. So uh, for instance, if you build like two different kinds of applications using carrier, um, like one of the applications people have built, uh, community members have built, it's called Hyper Messenger. You can download it on Android or iOS. The other is AnyPeer. And these are complete, worked on by two completely different parties um, and they both use Carrier. So now like you can add each other, um, you know, from between different apps, you know, add each other's users and then talk to each other. And that sort of creates that interoperability. So the same thing, we can apply that beyond just what Carrier allows us to do. So if we extend that to DID sidechain where you have this blockchain issuing all the decentralized identities, you can associate these DIDs to various, um, um, uh, you know, um, um, uh, data collection. But the thing is because only the user who has the private key to their DID has access to the data. If any other application in the future wants to access a user's data, the user first has to give them access and then they can monetize their data for, for uh, whatever case. Um, and on the left, um, you know, in the traditional world, the way that I like to think is on, in the traditional world, centralized world, users revolve around apps. But in this decentralized world where, where DID is, is there, uh, carrier is there, apps revolve around users. So that's a very uh, big change there. Last but not least, um, over the last two years since we started, um, you know, we have been building these components, uh, the blockchain being one component, carrier being another, Hive being another. Um, and these are components and they're ready to be used, you know, in native applications, all the SDKs are already available. But the main focus of the Elastos Foundation who's been working on this is now going to be Elastos Browser and we have been working for the, in this quite a, for quite a bit. What it is, is we built our own browser for mobile devices, iOS and Android. Um, and uh, you can build, um, you know, these de completely decentralized applications using Ionic framework utilizing the Cordova plugin. That's where the Cordova plugin comes in. We have provided support for pretty much all the components that I mentioned, DID, Carrier, all the sidechain, Ethereum smart contracts, everything through this plugin. So now what happens is we provide, we aggregated all these components into this one giant SDK. So people can, people who are, you know, developers without having to learn a whole lot about how blockchain works, they can start to utilize you know, this SDK and build applications for this browser. And we'll, we'll take a look, we have a demo on how this browser looks right now. Obviously the design and everything will change uh, by the end of the year because we're still in beta. Um, but 90% um, of the SDK is complete, end of year full developer SDK release. And the actual browser is supposed to go live for production um, early next year. So this is how the architecture of this browser is laid out. Um, in the middle, we have the client, which is the application, any application. There can be you know, hundreds of applications running inside this browser. Um, and we have these plugins for different components. And let's say the DID plugin, we have a plugin for that, but then that plugin itself is connected to the DID sidechain, which is an independent blockchain because we have that multi-chain uh, uh, layer there. And we have the Ethereum sidechain, same thing, through um, you know, Web3.js plugin, it connects to the Ethereum sidechain of ours uh, to run different smart contracts. Same thing with Hive, same thing with Carrier and everything. There's also going to be a decentralized app store. We already have an app store, it is centralized, but we will uh, have a new sidechain specifically designed to, uh, to, to you know, uh, where people can use it to 
uh, to sign it, sign their application using their developer's DID, which is decentralized identity, uh, put it in, onto the blockchain, um, digitize it so that they can sell it to other people. Um, so you know we're creating this this um, internet of value that uh, you know uh, that that everyone likes to speak these days. Uh, here's an, another architecture here. Um, let's say on the on the left there is the 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 Trinity actually it's code name it's it's basically Elastos browser. Um, the, the, but Trinity is the project name. Uh, basically we have all these plugins there and that's the browser. We can think of it like. Chrome browser, but um, it looks a little different because it, we, it's in-house grown, custom made. Um, there's also like an, something like a native application on the right. You can utilize this, you know, these SDKs, but uh, it's going to be very hard to utilize all the services because you're going to have to do a lot of groundwork if you were to build a native application. Whereas with this Elastros browser, we have everything ready. Uh, it, you can easily uh, connect, like, um, uh, pass values between these different apps. So, you know, as part of the Elastros browser, there will be a built-in wallet, there will be a built-in DID app, there will be a built-in D app store, built-in everything, right? And, uh, like, if I wanted to build a new application, let's say, you know, um, like, I, I'm not familiar with how the payment system works, like, on blockchain. What I can do is I don't have to worry about building all that by myself. I can just... Um, you know, communicate with the SPV wallet that's part of this browser and automatically um, have it connect to my own app, similar to how Apple Pay works. Um, and and uh, something similar, um, you know, like if, you if an app wanted to verify a user that whether they are the legitimate user, they can request uh, their DID through this, uh, through this DID app that's built in. So a lot of inter-app communication can be done on this Elastros browser because everything is just there, uh, you know, built in. Uh, this is the life cycle of a, of a D app, how it works on our browser. So you first start with um, an Ionic application and we provide command line tools. So you know, uh, you can easily get the template, the Hello World template easily, and then uh, we'll go over that in a little bit. So basically, you build an Ionic app utilizing these different plugins, you know, Ethereum smart contracts, DID, Carrier, Hive, whatever, right? And then you use our tool. That tool uses your developer's DID, takes that Ionic app, and then it signs it. So it's a blockchain verified, and your signature will be part of that application. And then it pack the, the tool packages it up as .epk file, which is the Elastos package, um, which is it is a modified version of the Ionic app. There's um, um, you know existing Ionic application. It will be it will be pretty easy to convert that into an EPK file using that tool. And then you deploy it to the D app store, um, you know one of the D app side chains in the future. And then on on the browser there, you, you can you can search for these apps and download it and install it. So the benefit of having all this in one browser is that, you know, previously if you wanted to utilize um, Ethereum smart contracts on your application um, and your application is very sophisticated, like let's say you're dealing with movies, music, all that kind of stuff, you would have to rely on saving those or the back end uh, of that onto a, some centralized server uh, or something, right? Whereas with, with the browser, there is all the, all the capabilities available to you and all of that is completely decentralized. So if you wanted to have a payment system, there is, it uses the blockchain, uh, the main chain payment system, right? If you wanted to do DID, it uses the DID side chain. If you wanted to run Ethereum smart contracts, it uses smart, smart contracts. If you wanted to save movies, music, whatever, onto uh, um, somewhere that you don't want to manage, it saves it to a decentralized storage uh, called Hive. So that's the basic idea. All right, uh, we're gonna do a demo. Um, you, you guys can go to this. We have a developer portal, um, developer.elastos.org. And then if you wanted to jump to the section that we're interested in, Elastos Trinity, I already have it open here. Um, but if you wanted to learn more, you can always visit this later. Um, basically, as I mentioned earlier, um, well, there are a few dependencies, uh, Mac or Linux, you need Python, you need the ADB installed, uh, Ionic, obviously, Node, and then, well, that's it. And you can install the Trinity CLI, oh my god, um, from, you know, using NPM, so it's already available. Um, I already have this installed, so I'm not going to do it again. 
but you can follow along if you, if you want to. Um, so the way to create a new app is to just Okay, so a lot of things you can do here. Um, you know, it new creates a default Trinity app, uh, configures everything that that you want to to be running in this um, phone. That's that's my phone connected. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, I already executed this, so I don't. I'm not going to do it again. But you can feel free to do it on your own machine. When you do Trinity clean new, it just creates a new application. It um, asks you you know, certain stuff. Whoops. So, you know, um, whatever this uh, hello package name is org.elastus.hello, whatever, I don't care about that. Author, and then I'll get the email, and then I'll just do it doesn't matter. Um, and there it is. I have the hello world here. So let me go to that. Before I, um, well, let me just install the dependencies here. But basically, um, here, this is my phone on the left. Um, you can install the Trinity browser, the Elastos browser itself, um, by going to GitHub Elastos. Actually, I think I put it here. Yeah, github.com slash elastos. That's where all of our open source repositories are located. Uh, we have over 100 repositories, and everything we do is open source. You can go to elastos.trinity. Let me just go there, actually. Um, if you wanted to download it onto your phone, right now the beta is only available for Android. But you can go to releases, and you can just check the latest daily build that we have there. That's pretty much what I have installed here. So let me go ahead and follow the instructions here. So OK, I created that. Um, and I already have my device connected. So I'm just going to run that. So what this is doing is it is going through that um, dApp lifecycle that I mentioned earlier. Right now, it's just using, when, you might be wondering, well, how is it signing it? I didn't even provide my DID. Right now, it's just some you know, hard-coded in signature debugging for debugging purposes. Uh, but uh, you know, when we go to production, obviously, you will need to enter your own DID and sign it, sign your application using your own DID. Um, so let me go there. That's the browser. So when you click on this browser, you can see it looks like a desktop because you know you, there's all these different applications. Some of these are built in, like I was talking about earlier, the wallet, the DID. There's a D app store, um, and obviously the, the one that we just um, installed, hello. And there it is. Um, you know, it, it was able to go through all that dApp lifecycle that we talked about. Obviously, a lot of it is for you know, debugging purposes. So any, everything that we talked about here, it you know, built an EPK file, and then it automatically pushed it to our uh, browser automatically, so we didn't need to do anything. Um, all right, so next thing I want to do is, um, let's say, well, there's the dApp store. it works. Okay, it does not work. Well, we'll take that offline. Um, but there's also like QR code. So uh, the carrier that I talked about earlier, uh, there's a built-in demo utilizing carrier uh, that you can use to communicate with each other. Uh, but instead of showing this, I want to show you uh, a native, well, this is it, but there's my address. Um, like the thing is, like I said, everything is blacklisted by default on Carrier. You have to add each other on your friends list first, so then I can communicate. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and go to um, an application that already uses Carrier called Hyper Messenger. 
Uh, I think this application has over 6,000 users right now. Uh, it's still in beta, I believe. But um, you can do a lot of things, like you can do in Telegram. You can create a room. Uh, you know, you can add your contacts, your messages. And cool thing is, pretty recently, this um, the developers of this application they are using Carrier for everything. Uh, from they implemented um, just last month um, a way to audio call each other, uh, utilizing your Carrier ID and video call each other. So. Um, you know, well, Clarence is sitting right there, so I'm going to call him, see if, oh, he's offline, so I can't call him. <laughs> um, that, so I can send a message offline, but when, it, when I want to do audio calling, both of the parties have to be online, at least for now. Um, okay, there it is. So I can call Clarence, or I can do the video. I can do video, but it's not very good quality. <laughs> um, very, uh, but it is completely, you know, secure, decentralized. There is no middleman here uh, going through any of your data. So uh, very privacy oriented. All right, so let's head on back over to the slides here. So we showed that, so it wrote a, well, it created a simple, simple Ionic application. We packaged it, packaged it up automatically using the tool. You can do it manually if you wanted to. And then it automatically deployed it to the App Store just to make things easier for developers. Like they don't want to go through all that manual process. Rather, we'll just provide the tool that can automatically do all of this uh, pretty easily. And then it ran the app finally. Um, and then I showed the demo. So for the next demo, we actually have a demo with Ethereum sidechain, which um, Clarence will be talking about and he can show the demo there. Just to uh, recap really quickly, so the Trinity browser or the Lasso's browser, um, one of the main points of it is that you have a shared wallet and a shared identity between all your applications, right? So right now, if you made an Ethereum application, you probably pretty much have to embed your own wallet, right? Because you want to pay for transactions, all those things require a wallet of some sort, right? So all we're saying is kind of like Apple Pay, you know, instead of building, uh, implementing, you know, integrating Stripe for all your applications, well, you just have one common wallet now, so all the apps that you're running inside can just feed off that wallet and then request from the wallet or the Trinity browser and say, hey, I want to send some money, verify it, and then you verify it. So then this kind of helps the onboarding process, right? So now pe people just need to download Elastos browser and they already have, a, they have to set up their wallet once and set up their identity once and then all the applications can just use that. That's one of the really cool things. And then the other thing too is we are multi-chain, right? So we have side chains for everything. What, what I'm gonna show you here is just the Ethereum um, side chain and it's really super intuitive. I mean, MetaMask just works. I mean, we just have um, Ethereum testnet, right? So if he, um, where's the, uh, It's, it works, everything that you used to work, use works exactly the same. MetaMask, you just, we have a, the testnet, it's rpc.elf.io. We have our own explorer, so you can go to explorer.elf.io. You can see that we just forked Block Scout. <laughs> That's, everything works the same as you, it would typically work that uh, you expect used to in Ethereum. The big difference is much higher gas limit. So the gas limit of Ethereum blockchain is I think three million we are at eight billion or so. Yeah, so, is that correct? Yeah, I think the Ethereum is 10 million or something. 10 million, Did they, okay, anyways. Um, yeah, well, we have eight billion gas limits. That's a, a fairly large gas, but that's because we can use DPoS. We don't need to have the POWs. You're not wasting any time. You can still hit that, you know, block, block time, 15 seconds, you know, and then you can still execute all, that, all those transactions. You're not doing POW anymore, right? So you're just executing, actually running smart contracts. There, there are no rewards. Uh, sorry, there are no rewards for you know um, block rewards for running an Ethereum sidechain because we have a multi-chain uh, structure. So the the delegated proof of stake nodes, which are also the delegated proof of stake for the main chain, are the same nodes who are also like doing the the uh, the signing and and producing and signing the blocks for the Ethereum sidechain and many other sidechains. So they only take the transaction fees, and because there's no more work involved the transaction fees will be very, very um, cheap. Yeah. cheap, very cheap. And it's very fast. If you trust DPoS, 
right? Um, remember, our, Bit our main chain has 50% of the hash power of Bitcoin. Uh, that's pretty significant. We basically, to attack our network, it's three times more expensive to even attack the Ethereum network. It's just based on, you know, if you go to nice hash, look at the hash rates. Um, at 50% of Bitcoin's hash power, I can show you right now, too, where we're at right now. Um, so backstory here, too, so you understand why we have 50% of Bitcoin's hash rate, because it's very significant. Um, we were funded and seeded by Dehong Fei, one of our angel investors from NEO. Uh, Jihan Wu from Bitmain is our, one of our seed f uh, founders. So we have very strong roots in China, and they, Bitmain was our main partners, which is the reason why, if you show all the miners, you can see that pretty much all of the main miner, mining pools in the world all mine Elastos because they mine Bitcoin. And if you're mining Bitcoin already, for no extra power, you can mine Elastos. So it's like a two for one deal. Why not, right? And obviously that's why you see via BTC, F2 pool, Ant pool, Huobi pool, they've all jumped on board. It's free money. Why, why not? Because you're already mining Bitcoin. So we take that um, hash rate, we use that to leverage that to provide a DPoS consensus pool for our Ethereum sidechain. So we just have an EVM running instead of POW with DPoS. And because it's running DPoS, much higher gas limit, right? But other than that, everything looks and works exactly the same. So um, I have a simple Trinity, which I already built using the Trinity CLI of a new, um, very simple. I just added a quick ELA F wallet balance. I am pulling in Web3, right? I got a set address here. So this address matches my MetaMask address. Here we have 0.2 ELF. I mean, I can show you if I go to wallet.elf.io. Oh, it's not not wallet. You can so you can create your wallets here. At wallet. Yeah, we basically forked my crypto. We have a faucet where you can get some testnet ether. Everything works pretty much the same. So just to quickly. And so for my app, all I'm doing is doing a Web3, doing a get ballots. Um, this is new React um, TypeScript method, if, you don't, if, you, if you've never seen this. But uh, set state, balance, so I'm showing the balance. So all I'll do is run this. So one of the cool things you'll see is that Remember what KP said, we blacklist all the IPs. The idea of the Elastos browser is the sandbox environment where you can't really call out. You're supposed to use the SDK because we want to make it very secure. And you're supposed to use decentralized services, right? You're not supposed to call a centralized service. If you, if you hit an IP somewhere, you are kind of already being centralized. Um, so we do have a blacklist. So the idea, then we, you can actually, what you can do is in the manifest, I've opened up the RPC endpoint for the Ethereum node, right? And you'll see it actually, the application will actually request right here, it'll request and make sure, hey, this app's trying to call out to this RPC port, you allow it and say, okay, allow. And now you can see the point three ELA I just got, which I just requested from the faucet and I mean, if you can connect to Web3, you can do everything else, right? So that's not, I don't really have to go through anything else. You can do anything you need. It's 100% compatible with existing Ethereum apps. You can take your app and deploy it to um, our Ethereum testnet. Right. And, yeah, and, and everything that Clarence talked about, it's all related to just Ethereum sidechain. Um, but obviously, you know, as more sidechain keep on spawning, like as we provide support for those sidechains, uh, the idea is if you're already, you know, familiar with those blockchain platforms and if you wanted to move to Elastos for cheap, for, you know, sec for uh, highly secure applications, completely decentralized, a way to, uh, um, you know, store uh, big data on, on the decentralized storage, everything just comes out of the box so you can easily port those over and instead of having a partly decentralized, partly centralized, you can try to work towards a fully decentralized application. And we're also working pretty hard on interoperability. So talk, connecting with Polkadot, Cosmos, figuring out you know, POA bridge or 
parity bridge. We have an Ethereum compatible chain, basically, right? So we are kind of trying to get along with all the other Ethereum based chains. There's so many now, right? Even like Lisk or um, Tomo chain, or things. there's many Ethereum based chains. Um, so we're trying to connect with them, but we do have a pretty strong security guarantee with the hash power of Bitcoin. And you can talk about CR. Okay. So the last thing I want to talk about is kind of a bit of background, right? Another bit of background. So Elastos was one of the top 10 raises of 2018. Uh, if you not heard of Elastos, we have over 70 employees. We are top 100 CMC. Uh, we raised $60 million last year, which is pretty significant. Um, and we, what we've done is we've set aside half of this into an ecosystem fund. So we've done basically what uh, EOS does with Block One or NEO does with City of Zion uh, because we're almost, so in terms of our roadmap, we just launched the Ethereum sidechain not too long ago on the test net. The main net will probably be up in a month or so, right? Well, so we're- The main net is already available. Available, but not, yeah. Whitelist. Not, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's still in the, in the validation stage, right? Um, so once we do launch, we're trying to, we're trying to start using this ecosystem fund. So we have now something called Cyber Public, which are, is our new DAO, where we have $30 million we're spent, we've already, that we're giving out as grant funds to projects, um, startups, to communities, for events, all types of things. Us being here was actually a Cyber Public uh, funding proposal. Um, so it's pretty cool. Anyone can go onto our website called cyberpublic.org. Uh, raise a suggestion, uh, council will vote on it and then make it into it up. If it gets approved, you get whatever you ask for. We've already given out half a million dollars. It's completely a grant. You just get a bunch of crypto in a wallet. No one says anything, so it's great. Um, no equity required. So we've already funded half a million dollars of projects. You just go to the website, make a suggestion and pretty much it works. Um, do you want to show the, I'm sure show the website here. So right now, because we haven't moved the 16 million tokens, the fund on chain yet, which we'll do in early 2020, we have an interim council of people just simply from appointed to vote on projects. But you can already see that we already have, if you just go to cyberplug.org, you can see there's a ton of funding going on. You know, um, here they went to do a meetup in Sydney. Or you can show the proposal for this. And yeah, I can already find it. We don't, we don't have, do we have a search function yet? We do have a search function. Thank God they added that. Right, so even here, I went on there and I said, hey, let's go to SF Blockchain Week. How much did this cost? Does that actually know how much it cost? Yeah, 18 grand <laughs> to be here. Got passed and here, I, here we are. So if you have projects, we have tons of projects on here, lots of apps, lots of games. Great thing is a lot of companies are using us to seed fund their startup seed fund. So you know, if you're building an Ethereum app and you want like 50K and you don't mind building your app on two different platforms, then by all means, I mean, Solidity, right? So you're writing Solidity already, just put it on our platform. It's like no different than if you made a game for Sony PlayStation and Xbox said, hey, you make that game for us too, we'll give you some money to do it. I mean, that's kind of a pretty sweet deal, right? So, um, and next year, right now, it's a bit kind of slow because we have humans going through it. We have, sorry, there'll always be humans because it's a, a council, but right now we only have three interim council members. So at the moment, th these three people do vet all the proposals, but starting next year, anyone can run for council by just staking 5,000 ELA and then trying to get the votes, 12 people will be on council and then it'll be a 12 person committee that votes for proposals and it'll be all on chain. So you literally just write a smart contract to say, I want X amount of money to do this project. If you guys approve it, then you get what you asked for. So it's a pretty ambitious experiment. I mean, $30 million on chain is, you know, no laughing matter. So we're really excited to try this next year. Uh, back to, I think we have a couple more slides, sorry. I don't know. Do you have another slide? Oh yeah, okay, I didn't have to go show that. So yeah, so you, you can see here that it's, it's a very simple voting process. Community votes on the, process, on the votes. We have uh, many CR regions. These are all funded by Cyber Republic as well. So these communities from Hong Kong's Bitwork or the Malaysian team, if you know anybody in a region that wants to 
startup you know, blockchain community, we're definitely funding those as well. Um, blockchain education is, I believe, a common goal for all of us. So the ecosystem fund, really, for us, we, any projects that you know, do advance blockchain adoption is pretty much game for us. So you can raise any kind of proposal you want. And that is the last slide. OK, thank you. I know once yet. Well, I, uh, that's it for our, for our demo, but I uh, just wanted to uh, put on a closing remark. So uh, we have been working for the last two years, and all the components are built. Uh, now we're just putting them all together into this Elastos browser, and uh, we're ready to go production by um, early next year, so probably January. And that's also when Cyber Republic, the on-chain governance system, will go live at around the same time. So like, if you are looking to you know, build some awesome stuff um, um, you know, as a developer, or you know, it doesn't just have to be like Clarence was saying, like, it can be these meetup events. And if, it's, um, if it makes sense, then the council members will probably vote yes. Um, so there, there's a lot of cool things um, happening, and especially we're you know getting ready for that uh, for that launch. So if you wanna like um, you know talk to us offline, uh, feel free to visit our booth. Uh, we One more thing, Jeff, I forgot to add, add as well. So our our wallet also we we do have staking in our wallet. So we have built all of this. So it's all on chain. So if you if you download the Elastos wallet, there's actually a voting function. You can actually see how many. Um, So our DPoS nodes are actually voted by through our wallet. These are all our DPoS nodes. Uh, I think even the returns over five percent annually now, in terms of. It depends on. Yeah, it depends on who you vote. A lot of these uh, nodes do give back. So you vote for them, they give you some money back. And then we're building on top of this the on-chain governance too. So in the wallet, you will you'll, you'll be able to vote for DPoS nodes, and you'll be able to vote for council members. And last but not least, you'll also be able to veto proposals. So we definitely feel like. $30 million is a lot of money. So the community feels that something is just not right or they don't trust a project that wants a million dollars for something. Um, there's a very low 10% threshold that we set that if 10% of the community says this project is a scam, then if they vote veto, then it gets vetoed. So there's that protection layer. I mean, these are numbers that honestly we're pulling out of our ass. I don't, I don't know if 10% is the right number, but it's a pretty low threshold that we've set. We've also set a 10% spend per year. So of the 30, 16 million tokens, you can only spend 1.6 million per year. So that's kind of the two numbers that we're trying. Um, it's a, like I said, it's, it's an ambitious ex ex experiment. We might adjust those numbers later on if we have to, but I think it might be through maybe in a consensus process as well. Yep. Thank you. Thank you.